Has anyone been struggling with a decision that you've made to draw lines, to set boundaries? You may be looking back and wondering, did I make the right decision? Was I being too hard? Maybe they weren't really that bad. And it doesn't help you if you have other people kind of pushing that narrative, telling you that you're being too harsh, telling you that you're being too evil. You can't do that to your family. How could you do that to your family? How can you do that to your sister? How could you do that to your brother? How can you do this to this person who's been so nice to you? And it's always good to search yourself. It's always good to make sure that you're not going overboard. It's always good to make sure that you're not doing things out of spite and malice and you're just trying to punish this person. It, that is a good thing. It is always a good thing to reflect because and do an internal check because you don't want to. That's something that a lot of people don't do. But one thing that you're going to realize that's different about yourself than the people that you have separated yourself from is that more than you're willing to check yourself, you're willing to see if maybe there's something you could have done that may have offended or something that you could do to be better and you will work towards that. You may have even done that in the past. You've forgiven things because you thought, you know, maybe this is going on with this person. You think about all that they are going through. You may remember the things that they went through in their childhood. If you know that you look at their circumstances and you think to yourself, maybe there's something I can do to help them. Maybe I did something to upset them. So let me adjust myself. Let me try to understand them. But the difference that you're going to realize is that you have been the one that's always been willing to do that. And they have not. Even if they do apologize to you, they do the same thing over to you again. If you're willing to forgive them and just move forward, it's not because they asked you for forgiveness, but you just gave that to them and they just went along with it. Sometimes they may resist you, give you a hard time to teach you a lesson and they'll eventually warm up to you, but nothing in them is coming to you to say, I was wrong. Maybe I should have thought in another way. Maybe I should have considered you. You are never going to have that conversation. And if you've had it, you would see that that conversation was just for that time. But the same offense and behavior was repeated. A lot of times what would make you think twice and make you wonder is because at the core of you, you have a heart for people. You have empathy. Empathy and caring is what makes you think back and wonder, maybe even doubt yourself because you care. But that person is not, most likely not thinking that way because if they were, they would have reached out to you. And when they end, if and when this person reach out to you, they won't reach out to you because they need a fix, meaning they need you in their life, but they don't have any, they need you in your life in, they need you in their life so they can continue to abuse you. They can, they can continue to get stuff out of you, but they're never going to change their ways. A lot of times these individuals don't think like you because they don't. If anything, they're talking about you. You're not even around, but they will talk about you when given an opportunity to. They're gonna go back to that one time they did something. And I want you to know that a lot of times when you have that person that can always reflect back on this one thing that they've done, that's because it's that one thing that they've done. They can remember certain instances that they actually may have done you a favor because they don't do you favors a lot. So it's easy to remember that. I want you to understand the difference between, let's say you're talking to a person 
who is trying to flip it and make it seem as if you are the worst person ever and you've never done anything for them. And you can sit there and say, look, I've always been there for you. I've done this. I've done that. I've done this. I've done that. A lot of times you're only putting out a few things and you're not doing it to throw it in their face, but you're trying to, you are trying to defend yourself to a person who's already painted you black and you're trying to say, no, that's not true. Well, they know that's not true. And when you're laying those things out to them, you're not doing it to throw it out. You're saying, how can you say that I'm a person that's not this way? This, this, this is what I've done. And a lot of times you're laying that out because you're trying to plead your case and because you really care about what they think of you. They're important to you and what they're saying is hurting you. So you want to say those things to them, but you're not throwing it in their faces versus them who are normally disrespectful and rude to you, they're gonna throw out those one moments of grace that they've given you, not because they care, but because they only wanna know that one thing that they've done for you. And they weaponize it. They're gonna weaponize it. And they're gonna top it off by saying, I should have let you starve that day, or I should have not picked you up, I shouldn't have helped you. If it wasn't for me, you would have been dead and gone and homeless. They will add that to it. That's how you know the difference between those two scenarios. But you will always be trying, if you really think about it, you would have always been willing to shrink yourself for them muzzle yourself not say certain things for the sake of the friendship and the relationship whereas they will just come out and say whatever to you you're willing to think and and wonder maybe it's not maybe it's me but they're not going to think that they're going to tell you that it is you they've disrespected you they've lied on you they may have cheated on you they tell lies you catch them in lies What's going to happen, guys, what you realize, you have to realize the decision that you have made was the right one because you love them. You love, love, or still love them. You've always cared for them. So when you're making a decision to draw a line, you're not doing that out of malice. You're doing it out of necessity. Sometimes because you love them so much is the reason why you have to separate yourself. As weird as that sound, I love you so much, I must separate myself from you. Because sometimes you love a person so much that you know that you're going to always be kind. You're always going to give. You're always going to consider them. And they're always going to take, 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 take. And you will be utterly destroyed. And because you don't know how to be unkind and be mean and vindictive like them, or when you've had to do it, it made you feel so terrible because you felt like you had to be rude, you realize it's destroying you. So I love you enough to leave you alone. Does that make sense? I've done a video about that. If I find it, I, and if I remember, I'll pin it below for you. The reason why you're thinking that is because you, you are a person, you have a heart and you care and you have compassion. That's why you wonder, well, did I do the right thing? But I will say, look at the track record. Look at the reason why you stepped away. Because more than likely, you have a few years of experience with this person. Some of you, you have a couple decades. A decade is 10 years. So think of how long this person may have been doing the things that they were doing. You have a decade on your hand, two decades, three decades. And depending on the person, depending on how long they've been alive, they're older than you, if they're a parent or something like that, they've been alive way longer than you were born. So they were probably already doing this for how many years before you came on the scene? One of the reasons why certain people behave the way that they do, whatever that relationship is to you, is because you enable it. You allow it to happen. You kept bringing them around. You forgave them, but you kept being around them. You moved them into your home. You introduced them to your coworkers. You introduced them to other people. You allow them to work in your business. You kept going into their church. Whatever the situation may be, 
you kept forgiving them. And so you move from getting to know them to dating them to getting engaged to them. And now you marry them. And the whole time they were showing you all sorts of different red flags. And you just kept forging forward. So what happens? You realize their disrespect begin to sort of create this web and it's just going further and further out. They disrespect you and they keep them around. Now they're disrespecting you in front of your children. Maybe they even disrespect your children. Now you keep them around anyway. Now they're disappointing you and acting out at a, you, you invited them to maybe a Christmas party or something at your job. And now they're showing out at your job. They're showing out, they're disrespecting you and doing things and causing problems between you and your neighbors because you allowed them to live in your house. You, they're causing problems between you and your husband, your wife, your children, because you allow them there. Then you bring them to your church. They're causing problems within your congregation. Who is the biggest issue here? You are. There's always going to be sneak peeks and a little trailer, like in a movie. Certain things are going to play out. They're going to do a little trailer. You're going to see something about them. They're going to act out a certain way. You're going to get a small bit of it. But because in your heart you care, you're going to talk yourself out of it. Or perhaps you were ready to go and they switched up again and explained that situation to you and told you it was a bad day or whatever or it was a misunderstanding or you know all these things and you forgave them and you stayed and perhaps they behaved for a bit but who they are at the core is going to come out now i would tell you for those that you know we're you know within being a christian you have a huge misconception and you have to understand because because you're a Christian, because you're a believer in the Lord, you will think that you're supposed to keep forgiving this person and still have them around. Well, there's a difference between forgiving someone and keeping that person around you. And that's something that I had to learn because there's a lot of things I tolerated, a lot of things that I dealt with because, well, I'm a believer in the Lord and the Bible says to forgive. But the Bible also teaches you about wisdom and discretion. And if you read the book of Proverbs, you will see that you have to get away from certain kinds of people. The Lord does require us to forgive. But you have to also understand something about forgiveness. If someone hurt, uh, let's say someone tried to kill me. I'm not expected to forgive that person that day or before the sun goes down. Just because the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. That's not what that means. I, by the time the sun go down, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to forgive this person for tr attempt trying to kill me. Or I need to forgive this person for trying to harm someone in my family. If someone goes out and slap my mother in the face, I don't need to forgive the person before the sun go down. That is ridiculous. But that is telling you not to hold on to anger for a long time. And how do you go through that to forgive a person? It's going to take a, it's going, it, it's a process. And it's only going to take a supernatural miracle that's going to come from the Lord in order for you to be able to forgive someone genuinely. But you must be willing. And I have videos about that. If you look at my playlist, you see the things that I have about forgiveness and that process. Sometimes people think forgiving a person is letting them off the hook and, but no, forgiveness is for yourself. And again, you have to check out my playlist about forgiveness to really understand what I'm talking about. But there are people who stay in toxic cycles in relationship and they keep having certain people around them, could be family members people at the church, whatever it may be, because they're taught, oh, I must forgive my enemies. But the Bible does not tell you to keep your enemies around you. You can forgive a person, but you may still have to separate yourself from them. Because you forgiving them is not going to change their character. It's not going to change who they are at the core. It's not going to squelch the evil that's within them. 
or the disrespect, the disdain that they have towards you, the harm that they want to bring to you, they are dealing with that. I can go into a restroom and if I walk in there and it is a mess, I choose not to use it. I step away, I shut the door. Forgiveness is something like that. This person is just a mess, a filthy restroom. They invited you in there. Turns out this is what they're all about. You realize they are a mess. And at that point, you choose to forgive them, okay, for exposing you to that, for choosing to present this thing to you, the offense, all right? But you have the right to withdraw and forgiving you. I shut the door. I walk away from you because now you have this person has to work on themselves. They are still that filthy restroom. They're that filthy outhouse still. That behavior that they continue to host, they continue to exacerbate. They get worse. They're not going to stop. And so what a lot of these type of people want to do, they want to stay filthy. They want to say, I'm no longer filthy, but they are still filthy through their behavior, what they do. And they want you to come in and they want to stay the same. So you have to understand what forgiveness will be. I forgive you for your action. As I told you, it is a process. But I know this is who you are. This is your character. It's not my job to clean you up. It's not my job to get you to change your ways. Because you may have found out by now in trying to do that, trying to live with that filthy owl house, trying to eat and to 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 bring that around you. Imagine this filthy owl house. You just bring it around. I've forgiven you. You still got an outhouse in your living room. You have an outhouse sitting at the table with your children. You brought an outhouse at your business. This person is no different. That person has to realize I'm a mess. I have this bad habit. I am a disrespectful person. I am a traitor. I'm a jealous person. I'm a vindictive person. I need to change myself. I have not been a great mom, a great father, great sister, brother, sibling, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. They have to see that. If not, they continue being that same way. So as I, I said, you can decide, hey, I've been there, done that. I know that particular stall is a mess. I know that our house stinks to all get out. I'm not going back into that. I, But yeah, I, I realize it might have been a reason why that happened. I'm going to put myself over here. Forgiveness is I forgive the action that you've done. It does not mean I'm open to you repeating it. So you have to understand those things. And if you read the Bible and you read the word of God, you will see that there are consequences for actions. Love, having a heart of compassion is still is not the same thing as, yeah, let's keep this person around me. Because they will continue to do certain things that would be destructive. You cannot keep a person who's jealous around you. You cannot keep bringing them around you they can't keep seeing you being blessed all the time and seeing the things that you have going on you can't let them into your house like that because jealousy will drive people to do certain things even if it's just to make a phone call to tell a lie on you and to keep you entangled jealousy drives people to do vindictive and crazy things Passive aggressive person. That's that person that they brood. You you can feel when they're mad, but they won't tell you anything. They just let you feel and they punish you. And you have to just go through that whole process until they decide they want to they thaw out and everything's warm again. And it, until next time. And then you have those who are just outwardly rude and disrespectful and crass. And because of who they are, especially if it's a parent, this is going to be very hard for you because you live in a society where they are telling you, oh, honor your mother and your father. Well, you can honor your mother and your father as far as their position, but it does not mean when they are an abusive and vindictive parent. It does not mean you are supposed to allow that. I have videos on that. I do have a playlist that talks about toxic families. 
it gets in more detail about it i don't want to get into it here because it will just be too long so if you want to know please go to my playlist toxic families it has stuff about jealous mothers toxic families toxic fathers um all that is there okay so you can go just go on my playlist scroll around i don't know what it will look like for you guys from your end i know how it looks on my end as a creator but it is all there because there are parents who what they do is they abuse the authority that they've been given as a parent and they behave as if they are gods and they abuse their children and they treat their children as objects and they treat their they are like loan sharks that's how they behave if they do anything for you you going you're not going to hear the end of it and you're always going to be hearing about what they could have done and how their life would have been better without you and how they could have aborted you or left you somewhere that is not the way a parent behaves what you're looking at is a person who is in a position of authority abusing it and that parent will be held accountable for the way that they handle that position of honor given to them so you have had to walk away from everyone you have had to close that door and you may say and wonder did i do the right thing because now you're looking around and you may see other people who have their families and their friends and sometimes you may feel bad because on holidays you everyone is going somewhere and you seem to be the lone shark of just you and your immediate family your children and all of that and you may be looking and seeing everyone's gathered together but don't forget why you left. You may sacrifice some things right now, but you're doing it for your lineage. You're doing it for the your generations to come. Through your seed, if you have children and their seed. And you have to remember when Jesus came, he became this ultimate sacrifice, but it was for the world. And you look at it that way, not that you are equivalent to the to Jesus in any way, but the 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 decision of kind of sacrificing whatever ties that you have that has been negative for the peace of your family right now or the family that you will have or just for your peace altogether. While you may miss them, are you not at peace? While there are certain aspects of your family or these individuals that you may really have enjoyed, is there now no more arguing and shouting and mind games? You're no longer feeling apprehensive. Your phone is not being filled with rude text messages and just being in that circle, the group chat, the group text, the group arguments, the phone calls are ringing off the hook. That's changed. So one of the ways that you know that you are doing things the right way is you have peace. And sometimes they'll be looking for you and they'll be searching for you and all these things. But have they changed? Because a lot of times they have not changed. They've just been used to you being there and mistreating you. And some of them, they're not even looking for you because that's how they are. You have always been the one to approach them. You have always been the one to ask them to forgive you. You have always been the one to just take whatever they dish out. So they're used to that and they'll stay that way. And then there are those that will hound you, hound you, chase you, chase you down. Please, please forgive me. But they'll never change. And you've had enough years to know that. They will cry. They will wail. They will send people to look for you and all these different things. And Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, But at the core of it all, you let your guards down. You go through it again. You're going to go through that cycle. And I want you to understand that sometimes God would allow you to discover something about them that you realize this person does not give a rat's behind about me. You will see that they're willing to do certain things that you never thought you will discover 
Some of you have discovered some things they've done behind your back. Some of you have discovered that, listen, they'll get so mad at me that they will disrespect my children. They'll disrespect me. They'll put me at risk. They'll try to cause me to lose my job. They will tell my husband lies. They'll tell my wife lies. They'll try to use use things against me they'll threaten to tell my children or tell my children things that i've done when i was younger you have to be careful especially sometimes it's a parent so you're disciplining your children and your parent may come along and oh well you did this and you did that they try to negate and nullify your authority then you have that parent that is disrespectful and evil to you vindictive but they will be in good graces with your children they will work on getting your children to now they pull them pull them in by being nice and kind to form an alliance with your children so when god tells you to pull away obey him because they are trying to keep doing that same thing the thing that they did to you the things that they may have done to your siblings if you have siblings and now they try to they not stop it now they feel that they have a right to now infiltrate your workplace infiltrate your business infiltrate your place of worship by forming alliances against you to paint you in this way to make you look bad form alliance with your seed and your children to form alliance with your husband or your wife now they want to be the person that they become besties with your husband or your wife, besties with your boyfriend and girlfriend, where they are going to them and they can sit and know that they've talked to them about something that they're not going to share with you. Or disclose some things and betray you to your husband, wife, the person that you're with in your life. Tell them something and swear them to secrecy. Now you don't know what has shifted and changed in this relationship, in your friendship. Because there's something your mother told them. Something your father told them. Something your sibling told them. And now they're looking at you with the side eye and they're not going to come to you because they're going to feel like, listen, if their mom told me this or their dad told me that, it's got to be the truth. When in fact, there's a whole other side to the story. When in fact, it's not true at all. So when you get your warnings, when God shows you these vindictive things that they do, you have to pull up and you have to remove yourself because if not, they continue the destructive path. And some of you, they've already been close to your children. So how do you deal with that? That is something that you have to seek God about and decide what you want. But if they're minors, they're your children. You make the decision. They may not understand everything right now. But you make that decision and you make that choice. This is how things are going to be. You may not understand everything now. When you get older, you can choose to do what you want to do. But this is how things are going to be right now. Now, sometimes it's hard. And as I said, you have to pray and see, see exactly how you need to deal with that. You have to make sure you're not being vindictive and you're just being evil. But what normally happens is in time, when you're being led by God and how to deal with that, especially with the grandparents and stuff, I'm not sending my kids anywhere. If there's going to be this person that's going to be talking about me, disrespecting me, having my children thinking evil, we're not going to do that because it goes beyond just the person trying to turn my children against me, for example. It goes with them sowing negative seeds in them and a certain level of behavior that they're going to pick up on and think it's normal to sit around and talk about somebody. They begin to condition the children so the children get used to hearing bad things about you. And so that filial love that they should have for you, the, that loyal love, that sense of loyalty that children normally have for their parents, they will taint that. That's why you have to look at things not only as who you're seeing in the natural, but spiritually. The Bible says our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rules of the darkness of this world. So they're being driven by something evil that they have entertained all their life. You have to think about that with your child. 
because not only are they telling them things bad about you, not only are they not only are they beginning to shift the way the child thinks about you, but they will also be planting seeds where the child is being taught how to listen to evil or destructive things being said, listening to maligning and gossip. And also they will begin to practice that. So you have to think of the bigger picture of why you may separate. And it may not even be that they're close to the children. Sometimes it's just one minute you're good with them, the next minute you're not. Next minute things are great, next things it's not. Next thing you're talking, next thing you're not. You don't want your children to be getting used to being around the family and then something else is going to happen that y'all are not speaking. The children don't understand that. They're not going to let their kids talk to your kids. They're too mad at you to deal with your children. They don't want to deal with your children at all when they're angry at you. That type of stuff, guys, you don't want them to be in the seesaw up and down thing. So while things may seem very quiet right now, and sometimes you, you look back and go, oh, everyone's at the family trip. Everybody's at the family, whatever. A lot of times what happens is birds of a feather is going to flock together. They're all the same. They get along or they stay in the toxicity. They just figure out, this is how I deal with this. When they start acting up, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to go to the family uh, dinner, but when this person starts to do this, I'm going to leave. Or they, this is what I'm going to do. Or I'm just going to ignore them. Or you know that's how they, this is how they are. No, you don't have to live this life of, you know that's how they are. Just don't say anything. Because even when you're not saying anything, seeds are still being sown in you. In what they're saying and what they're doing. You should not get used to a family member abusing you. You should not be getting uh, getting used to or be used to a family member who insults you, who disrespects you, who disrespects you in front of your children, who can cut you off, who can cut you and the children off, who can say and go around and do bad things, a family member who will embarrass you, a family member who will jeopardize your job, jeopardize your residence, who causes problems. This is not what you entertain. This person, you must separate yourself from them. And if you choose to keep them around you, then don't complain anymore. You sit back and you watch the downward spiral of your life. You sit back and learn to be a victim. You sit back and realize that, yes, I'm probably going to lose my friendship because I allow this person to be around my friends. Keep inviting Keep inviting the devil into the spaces where God has blessed you, when God has elevated you, when he has given you, when he has blessed you, he's given you the ability to do well in life. Because a lot of times what happens, the Lord will see what's going on and he's given you the grace and the mercy and the favor and you keep inviting this person in. And what they do is they destroy what you have. They create chaos. The Lord provides you a place of peace and rest, but now you move them in with you. You keep on rekindling this relationship. And it eventually is going to lead you down this path where you're going to learn your lesson a little too late. So right now you're in the phase of, did I make the right decision? Did I do the right thing? More, more often than not, you have. Don't allow yourself to think maybe they were not that bad. When you know that you have lived with and been around this person for a long time, that they have done the same things over and over again. The thing that happens is sometimes truth is ignored. The Bible tells us in Matthew 7, by their fruit, you shall know them, meaning by what they do, not what they say and not what they promise you, what they do consistently what they've been doing for years, what this best friend has been doing for years, this supposed best friend, the little things that you have picked up on that friend, the friend who's nice to you, but when you get around other people, they begin to insult you. They begin to say things. They try to embarrass you. The friend, the relative that's always up in your boyfriend's face or your girlfriend's face, that's always flirting with whoever you bring home. They've been doing it since you guys were little children. Flirt with your boyfriend, flirt with your girlfriend, do little things 
they may have never slept with them, but you may have that cousin, that nephew, that that aunt, that individual that does that. You've seen them do it, but you don't want to believe it because, oh, that's my cousin. But you realize, no, this is what your cousin do. Your cousin likes to flirt with or put herself or himself in a way to get close to whoever you date or whoever you're with. But you feel shame to think it, but you see it. You've seen that flirtatious cousin all these years. You've seen that flirtatious sibling, the one that tells your secrets, the one who has the outburst, the one who does sneaky things behind your back that the Lord reveals and shows you that this person has betrayed you. Things with your parent. You're going to see it and you have to see it for what it is and believe it. And a lot of times because there is a need for community and connections, one will ignore it. But you can't ignore habitual behaviors and cycles of toxicity. How many times will you forgive this man for the same thing and stay with them? How many times do you forgive this woman and stay with her for the same thing? Well, how many times do you forgive? 70 times 7. You can forgive, but it doesn't mean I stay. Remember what I told you about that dirty stall and that dirty toilet, that dirty outhouse. I know you're dirty. You know that outhouse is dirty. You know the floors of that outhouse is wet and juicy with tissue sitting in there. You know it has a stench. You wouldn't go keep going in there. But what normally make people go use a dirty outhouse sometimes? Desperation. You've got to pee so bad. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go. And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have any choice. But that's why you are separated. So you're no longer desperate. He takes you away from the source of what it is or sources that's always kept you there. Desperate. Oh, I'll use a dirty bathroom. It doesn't matter. Now he's pulling you to stand on your own. And really those longings that you have, it's natural. But you have to remember that our house is dirty. There are people that don't learn until they've lost what they've had. And a lot of times them pursuing you, if and when they do, is because of how they feel. It's not because of you. Other times they won't pursue you because that's how it's always been. You must bow down. And they don't see you as important enough to pursue. It's like when you break up with a person, they don't pursue you because they don't want to be with you anymore. Something else is there or they want to pursue someone else. Either someone is there already or they want to see what else is out there. They're done with you. That's why he wasn't, he's not going to call. She's not going to call. They're done with that. Other times they know they've messed up. So they're not going to try anymore. And then there are those, they will pursue you to no end, but you know it's a cycle as usual. And people need to understand, especially those of you when you break up with a person that's been toxic, leave those things alone. You broke up and end, you went back with them again, maybe gave them a second chance and you broke, leave it alone because too many people end up dying. They end up dying. The people end up being murdered. I've seen documentaries of people that got killed. And you know what? You, when did they go back? They would have broken up many times. And they get back with a person. But what happens? How did it go? Why do they now kill them? Like, why didn't they kill them the first time? Or the when they were first together versus now they get back together. This time they kill them. Kill them. Well, I will tell you why. Because the our house is always dirty. The person does not change. And the more they continue to be how they are, vindictive, whatever, passive aggressive, whatever their behavior is, when they don't change and they practice, what happens? Practice makes perfect. It gets worse. And you have to understand from a spiritual aspect, 
When you do little things and you you perfect that level, you're going to go to a high level of evil, a higher level of wrongdoing, a higher level of jealousy, a higher level of manipulation, a higher level of paranoia. The more because they're not changing, they're not seeing their way. So what happens? Whereas you used to argue with this person, or they will take a break because they have they now their their level of evil or entitlement have increased. Now they feel that they can. They now go from not just breaking up with you, but taking your life. Because evil, sin, exacerbate. That's why you have a parent who's 70, 80 years old, even though they have gray hair and looking, oh, they're still doing evil. What happens now is because they got older and they have gray hair and they look all wrinkly and and they've reached the, this place where you, you do respect them more. You're supposed to honor them more. But inside, they're still evil like they were when they were 20. So now they use the crown of glory, the, the, the grays in their hair and, the, and the, the wisdom and the honor that comes with becoming elderly. They use it for evil and it's harder to suspect them because this is a little lady in a little hat with gray hair. And they've become more skilled because now they've had many, many, they're almost close to a century of doing evil. And it's hard to detect them. And there's no way that you're going to be able to prove somebody who's really old and, and just looks so grandmotherly or grandfatherly is evil. Because this is normally positions of honor. And they become more, they, they, they become more subtle in their evil. Where everybody thinks you're crazy and you're wrong. How could you pick on that, that your grandmother? How could you believe your great-grandmother is evil? You're evil, right? So when you are separated and when you're pulled aside, stick to it. Don't allow yourself to sit there now. Now you're separated, but now you're mulling over everything they've ever done to you. This is where the Lord deals with your heart and help you to go through these layers and get you healed so that now you can have a closer and healthy relationship with your own family, closer, better relationship with your, meaning your immediate family. Perhaps you have children, your husband, your wife. Maybe it you get, you may not have children, but he's going to deal with you. So your relationships will be healthy because if not if you're sitting there and you're thinking about everything that they've done you might as well still be back there with them because what you're going to do is now you're going to become a problem when you go out in life and you get around people you're going to be carrying all these chips on your shoulder you're thinking that this person is doing the same thing that your your family did or this person did or your ex did and that's not right this is how we end up meeting people sometimes you meet them right and they're telling you about all these things that has happened to them and who has treated them so poorly and who did them wrong. And you feel sympathy for them. And let's say you're like, oh, you can come and stay in my property. You let them live in one of your properties for a while or you loan them a car or you hire them or you let them come and live with you. And you find this person is a problem. Why does that happen? Because maybe, number one, they lied to you and none of that happened. They were always an issue. Or they these things happen but they they did not allow themselves to heal because they're still carrying so much bitterness and anger and resentment in themselves that they can't see things from a healthy perspective they're unable to do that so what happens is they are going to be looking uh they become entitled and so when you're trying to talk to them about something they're going to double down and they're going to reflect and think you're doing what the other person did and before you know it they now are the abuser because a lot of those things abusive words and seeds and things that that they may have been exposed to now they know how to deflect or become that 
And in their minds, they're thinking, I'm not as bad. I'm not as bad as my family were. I'm not as bad as this person was. But you are just as bad because that person don't know your family. They just know you. That's how people perpetuate the seeds of abuse to their family and their children because they will compare themselves to the level of abuse that they went through and they think what they're doing now to their children is different because you don't know how bad I had it. But you are the ultimate to your children because no, they didn't know that. They know your horrors. They know the terror. They know the hurt and the pain that you bring. So you have to be very careful sometimes when you are in your now away that now you're on the path to healing so that you will be healthy and not become problematic in other people's life because you're still carrying all that hurt and bitterness from the past so i know i've said a lot of things guys i apologize that the video is still long but as i've said in the past are you worth an hour yes you are are you worth 45 minutes and counting Yes, you are. When you sit and watch a movie or a series that's an hour and 11 minutes and change, sure you will. So listening to something that may help you and bring some clarity and some, you know, just answer those questions that you've had about yourself, I believe you're worth that as well. With me, I incorporate prayer. I am a believer in the Lord and Having the Lord in my life through prayer and the word of God helps me. And as believers in the Lord, that's what we should do in addition to taking practical measures. Because a lot of times, as I said, as Christians, a lot of Christians who are in this repetitive cycle of foolishness because they feel like, because I'm a Christian, I'm supposed to stay here. No, as a Christian, you must know how to balance forgiveness, how to balance empathy, in addition to loyalty, I'm sorry, in addition to wisdom and understanding and discretion and discernment that comes from God. You cannot stay around everybody. And whatever sacrifices you're making now is for your peace of mind. You have people, they'll drive you crazy to the point of suicide. They'll drive you crazy to the point that you think of committing suicide. They'll drive you crazy to the point you have no peace. You doubt yourself. You will be living with a person that when you hear them moving around in the next room, you're hesitant. You're afraid to go to the kitchen to get anything. You're afraid to eat in front of them. You're afraid to breathe too hard around them. When you get around them, you're tense. You're doing everything in your power to make sure they're fine, they're okay. You, you do everything to shrink down. You are so afraid to achieve. You're so afraid to receive a compliment because of how they are going to feel. This is not a healthy relationship. And that's why you have been pulled away and you have been separated. Because they're always going to be at our house. And what happened if you use a dirty outhouse in the natural? You're taking in all that nasty smell. What happens when you're around a dirty outhouse? You're trying to use the bathroom, but ew, everything is so, you're barely touching everything. You, you, you're uncomfortable, right? You're literally, that's what walking on eggshells will look like. When you get around this person, you're being so careful. You see what I'm saying? And living in with this level of hypervigilance is unhealthy. It's un unhealthy naturally. It's un unhealthy emotionally. It is unhealthy mentally. And most importantly, it is unhealthy spiritually. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. That's a proverb in the Bible. Hope deferred. Deferred is just, it never happens. You have hope. You're hoping. You're hoping. It makes the heart sick. And think of how you feel when you're rejected again. Think of how you feel when you've done everything possible to try to make sure the person doesn't get angry, but they just do. There's some people, guys, that even when you're trying to keep the peace, they know it. They're still going to just 
pull everything. They're going to just yank that tablecloth off the table because they need chaos. They'll think, it's been a long time since I've cussed her out. I've cussed them out. It's been a long time since I've hurt them. And because you're being so docile and because you're doing everything in your power to not upset them, they're going to, they're going to just mess things up anyway because they want to unleash. They want to unload on you. They resent your peace. And that evil in them, because that's what it is, that evil, that darkness, that bitterness, whatever it is that they continue to hold on to, that victimhood, that entitlement, that bitterness, that anger, that resentment, that jealousy, that just, just that, uh, that's in them has to poke you because you know why they do that to you? Because they know there'll be no consequences They'll forget. They'll come begging me for forgiveness after I've hurt them. They'll come They'll come around after I've hurt them. All I got to do is throw out a sorry. All I have to do is just call them up. All I have to do is just, you know, make a joke and break the ice. Everything's going to be fine. That's why they take those chances with you. And other times they have just reached a place where they just don't care. I don't care. It doesn't matter if he's in my life or she's in my life one way or the other. I'm going to take a risk. But even with their bad behaviors and their ill temperament, that job that they want to keep, they'll be on their best behavior even when they don't agree with things. They may do some things, but they know they need that job. When they didn't have any place to live and they were about to be kicked out, they were on their best behavior and they were kind and they were nice and they were, oh, so you can move them in. And once they got comfortable, they switched. So they know how to behave. A lot of you, you may have seen your, your loved ones, family, they act one way in public, another way in private. You begin to figure out if we have company over, they're going to act differently. You begin to figure out, well, if they're, if we're at church, they're nicer, or if we're over here, they're nicer, or if the, this person comes over, we're good. So you look forward to visits or you, you just figure out their, what makes them tick or what makes them go off the go off the deep end right and you're always trying to keep everything right there in the middle so their lack of respect for you is what it boils down to they don't think much of you they'll risk it all because unfortunately all these years you've been the doormat all these years you've been their punching bag all these years, you're forgiven each and every time, and they figure, I don't have to change myself. So, your separation, you choosing to shut that door, is not a bad thing. You keep moving forward. You still get the counsel that you need. You still pray. You still seek God to help you. You work on yourself, and you form new alliances. And as you raise your young children, depending on how they are, they're going to get old and they're going to go out in the world. And then they perhaps may become parents and get married and you'll be there to enjoy those things. Whatever the thing is, even if you are, you are the sacrifice now, you're doing it for your lineage. And the difference that's going to be between you and them is that even though you're away from them, you wish them no ill will. You're away from them. You're not thinking of, you, when you think of them, it doesn't get you angry and make you think of how you wish they were hurt. You don't feel the need to talk bad about them to anyone else. Why? You're healed. You're just separate now. Whereas they will probably, if something happened to you, they may be happy about it. They may take joy in that. They may gloat in that. They'll never admit it to you. They don't think when they're away from you, they're not thinking I have done the wrong thing. They will be complaining about everything that was wrong about you and that one thing that they did for you. They'll be complaining and thinking about what, what, how unreasonable you're being and talk about you badly to other people. And they will say, I'm not mad at you, but they are mad at you. You will think absolutely nothing. You wish them the best. And not that fake, I wish them the best. But genuinely. Whereas they say that, but that's not truly how they feel. So stay the course. Do what you need to do. 
and don't completely isolate yourself. Use wisdom in things that you need to do, places you can go, take some dance classes or whatever, arts and craft, whatever. There are lots of things that you can really do and enjoy yourself. And sometimes you're a loner, right? You like to go to places alone and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't know why society plays this thing like you have to be in a group. There are people on this planet who I feel that are absolutely very strong people who enjoy their own company. They like to do things alone. They take a trip by themselves. They go out to eat by themselves. They go do things by themselves. And they really, really like it. They like to be by themselves. They'll talk to you and everything, but they like their space. They don't like you just showing up to their door. They're not into people always being over their house every day. They don't feel the need that they need to go somewhere. They don't feel like they have to be doing this and doing that all the time. And I feel like it takes a very strong person to be able to do that. So don't feel bad if you're a loner. If you enjoy your own company and that's what you like to do, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. All right, guys, this video has gone on for almost one hour. I hope that you have come this far with me. If you've come this far with me, put down below, I've come this far. I meant, you know, you, you, you went all the way to the end with me. And or just give me a thumbs up. That's fine. And guys, we just, uh, you just have to keep your eyes fixed and realize sometimes separation is necessary. Lot had to be separated. He was pulled out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Noah had to go inside of that ark. Joseph got kicked out of his family and he was separated after a while. He, he was separated from them, but he flourished and he became second in command from Pharaoh, but he did not go back home. So separation is sometimes necessary in your walk. Embrace it. Don't look back. Don't worry. Don't try to minimize what you experienced because you were minimizing your experiences for a long time and that's why you stayed and continued in these relationships and the abuse continued and they got worse. So stand your ground, move forward and understand that you're making the right decision. All right, guys, you guys can email me if you have questions. You can comment below, and I'll talk to you guys soon. God bless.